Well, it is a joy to open God's Word with you. Uh, today, as we look at Deuteronomy chapter 20, we're going to continue looking this this whole larger section, some specific uh, specific examples of regulations and uh, in some cases what we call case law or answering a specific moral or ethical issue. Uh, and today, uh, God is going to address through Moses warfare. So read with me. I'm going to go ahead and read the whole chapter of Deuteronomy 20 because I think it's important for us to get everything that's going on. When you go to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots and an army greater than yours, do not be afraid of them because the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt will be with you. When you're about to go into battle, the priest shall come forward and address the army. He shall say, Hear, Israel, today you are going into battle against the enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid. Do not panic or be terrified by them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. Uh, the officer shall say to the army, Has anyone built a new house or not yet begun to live in it? Let him go home. Uh, or he may die in battle and someone else may begin to live in it. Has anyone planted a vineyard and not yet begun to enjoy it? Let him go home or he may die in battle and someone else enjoy it. Has anyone become pledged to a woman and not married her? Let him go home uh, or he may die in battle and someone else marry her. Then the officer shall add, If anyone is anyone afraid or faint-hearted, let him go home so that his fellow soldiers will not become disheartened too. When the officers have finished speaking to the army, they shall appoint commanders over it. When you march up to attack a city, make its people an offer of peace. And if they accept and open their gates, and all the people in it shall be subject to forced labor and shall work for you. If they refuse to make peace and they engage you in battle, lay siege to that city. When the Lord your God delivers it into your hands, put the sword to all the men in it. And for the women and the children and the livestock, everything else in the city, you may take these as plunder for yourself. And you may use the plunder for the Lord your, Lord, your God gives you your, from your enemies. This is how you are to read all the cities that are at a distance from you and, and do not belong to the nations nearby. However, in the cities of the nations, the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. Do not leave alive anything that breathes. Completely destroy them. The Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Other, otherwise, they will teach you to follow all the detestable things they do in worshiping their gods, and you will sin against the Lord your God. When you lay siege to a city for a long time, fighting against it to capture it, do not destroy its trees by putting an axe to them, because you may eat their fruit. Do not cut them down. Are the trees people that you should besiege them? However, you may cut down trees that you know are not fruit trees and use them to build siege works until the city at war with you falls. Now there, again, there's a ton going on in this passage. I want us to see, though, uh, that God's focus in warfare is not man's focus. The first uh, encouragement he gives God's people is that when they go to battle, we could say in our lives, when we face a challenge, when we do what God has called us to do, we find victory in God. He says, don't look for anywhere else. Don't find victory anywhere else. God is the one. Today you're going in battle against your enemies. Do not be faint-hearted or afraid. Do not panic or terrified. For the Lord your God goes before you to fight for you against your enemies. He will give you victory. God is the one who ensures our victory, not ourselves. We don't need to be afraid. We don't need to be faint-hearted. We don't need to worry or be concerned. If God calls you somewhere, He's the one that's in control of it. Next, we see here that uh, uh, in the warfare that Israel's to engage in, uh, his, his, the men that go are to be focused on the task. And again, we can apply that to our lives. When God calls us to something, we're to count the cost and be focused. Look, the men who, who've just built a new house or just planted a new vineyard, who've just got engaged, don't need to go to battle. Why? They may be distracted. They may not be focused. The primary thing in their lives is not war, but focusing on God and what He has called them 
to do. And then God says through Moses, if anybody's afraid, they don't need to go. Why? Because their fear and their faint-heartedness isn't just um, a need for encouragement. It shows their lack of trust in God. This reminds me of when Jesus tells us to count the cost before we choose to follow him. Who will start on a battle knowing they can't win? Who will start building a house if they don't have the resources, right? Don't uh, We need to be aware of what the cost is and what's expected of us. Be ready. Be focused. God's work requires focus. This is not an excuse to get out of following God, but this is a, uh, a decision we have to make before we begin. Are we ready to do this? Are we focused on God's task? Next, we see in the next section here, we see that God's people when they go to battle, are to again show mercy. Before you attack the city, ask them if they want to surrender. Don't kill all the women and children and animals. Be gracious, merciful. Avoid bloodshed when you can. And in the next section, we see going forward, he says, but when you attack people in the land I've promised you, this is the Canaanites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Amazites, the, the, the Jebusites, the people in the land of Canaan who God is giving them. He says, wipe them out. Why? Again, because God wants his people to be focused on him. They're to take radical steps to remove idolatry from their land and from their midst, that they would remain focused on God. And ladies and gentlemen, we're not going to war against Canaanites, Hivites, Perizzites, and Jebusites, but we need to take radical steps in our lives to remove idolatry and sin. We need to, to cut areas of our lives off, distractions, uh, 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 idols, things that pull us from God. Sometimes relationships need to be removed from our lives. The point of all this is that when the Israelites go to war, they go with God with them, by their side, and ensuring their victory. And when we follow God's command, when we go out for God, our focus has to be on Him. We have to find victory in Him. We need to count the cost. We need to be prepared so that we can focus. We show grace and mercy. We do our work, whatever it may be, with God's character, not the world. And we avoid idolatry and sin at all costs, taking radical steps in our lives. Are we ready to be the people, the men and women that God has called us to be? This is an example of, of some specific teaching God gives his people with principles that will apply in our lives today. Are we ready to go fight and serve and live for God? We have to do it the way he says, or we will fail. We have to do it the way we says, or he won't get the glory. We have to do it the way we says, he says, or we will fall into idolatry and sin. <laughs> Father, we thank you again. What a joy to open your word. What a privilege to be with your people. Help us to be focused on you as we do your work. Help us to trust in your power and not our own. Help us to show your character. And let us not fall into sin, idolatry, or temptation. Let us be wholly and completely devoted to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again. Have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you Sunday morning, whether you're with us in person for Bible study at 930 and worship at 1045, or you join us here on Facebook at 1045 for worship. I look forward to seeing you and for what God is doing.